Hey there, it's Kendra Kunov in my love-hate relationship with Facebook Live. Um, I was so excited that you could now go live from your computer, but man, I've been having some weird glitches trying to go live from, from my computer. So, I'm just gonna let that go. <laughs> so, I wanted to talk about um, what I'm calling emotional and relational nutrients. And it's actually something that um, I've done a fair bit of teaching on, it's something that matters to me a lot. I think it's um, really important. Partly just in our own selves, it's really, it's an important distinction. And it's really important in the relational domain where that comes into play with other people. But I was, it was, um, I was reminded of this and the idea to speak about this in particular right now was uh, sparked by a comment that I uh, received earlier this morning from a fellow who watched the webinar that John Wineland and I did together recently. And one of the pieces, I'm not going to go a lot into the specific, but he was talking about a part of him that hadn't had a lot of space and how important having that part of him be held had been in his own process. And I think for most of us that makes a lot of sense. It's like, oh, there's some part of us that either hasn't had a chance to be expressed or hasn't been witnessed or hasn't been held. And we can get it intellectually, um, but in practice it can be challenging. Like, what does that really mean? Or how do I do that? And for this video, I might get into some pieces of how to do that or, or what that means, but the part I really want to speak to is around how uh, our emotional and our relational nutritional needs can cloud our sense of ourselves. So the reason that I call it like nutrients is that I think of it a lot the way that we actually need food and um, minerals and vitamins. So we're all, a, first of all, we're all a little different. And I'm going to use the analogy for a little bit here. I'm going to let the analogy run. <laughs> so we're all a little bit different in terms of what we need nutritionally. There's some similarities, you know, such that we can create uh, guidelines for what people need so there's there's enough similarity to create some sort of guidelines about at least where to start but we each need to actually find out like uh, some people and I it, please let's not get into a big debate here about what's actually true nutritionally because I'm just using it as an analogy and I, I do think that it follows uh, really find that there's some amount of animal protein that they need in order to thrive, like to feel physically well. Most of us need like a good amount of vegetables, but what those vegetables are can vary and it can vary season to season. You know, if it's really like you're in yam mode and you need whatever it is the yam provides and then there's like the broccoli and we need the salad or we need these different things that we need. And then there's what I call um, micronutrients, both uh, physically and in our, our food nutritional, and also we have them relationally. So like I think of things like, uh, I don't know, psyllium, which I don't even know what that is, but you don't need a lot of it. Uh, even things like, like, like there's our vitamin C and our, our calcium, but we need a little bit of vitamin B or vitamin D or there there's some that we you know we can get a lot of and it feels good and others we just need like this little bit and if we get too much we'll actually be like whoa something's off because we have too much so the way that shows up relationally is that there are relational there are emotional relational nutrients that I need a lot of and to bring it back to the analogy your relational, emotional, nutritional guidelines, as it were, they're gonna be a little different than mine. 
So, you know, we like to tease this apart in terms of are you an extrovert or an introvert? You know, what's your love language? So there's a lot of systems out there that can give you a little bit of a framework on where to start. For instance, again, I don't want to go super into the love languages, but just to use it how it, how it plays in, like I'm, words of praise are my primary love language. You basically just can't give me too many words of praise. There's no overdose on that. That's like my vegetables, right? Like that's the thing. Oh my gosh. I just like, I need a lot of it or, um, I suffer relationally and emotionally. And there's a lot of ways I can get that met, but just kind of sticking with the, like, what do I need to feel well in this area? And, um, but then many people have say touch as their primary love language. And it's that thing where it's like, you know, they're, they're not getting the touch that they need and they'll start to feel this, this craving. So it can come out in these odd ways, you know, when you really need something. So the first place that I see people get really tripped up is imagining that their emotional relational needs are this, we are the same as other people's. And one way you see this, if you asked somebody flat out, are your emotional relational needs the exact same as somebody else's? People would say like, of course not. But people tend to use words like, well, everybody loves touch. Or of course people wanna be praised. And there's a degree to which there's some truth to that, again, in the way that there are some broad human needs that tend to be across the spectrum. But really looking at like, how much do I desire praise versus how much my partner desires touch? And getting like, oh, we're different in that way. And, and so the first place is really this, um, first of all, there's a place of introspection. And it comes from partly looking inward and saying like, what do I really want and need? And for many people, that's very hard. Relationally, people don't want to say, I need something. So many of us have the idea like, well, if the other person doesn't want to give it to me, then that's okay. And I can da 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 And you know, yes, that's true. But I would say start. It doesn't mean that anybody has to give it to you, but please, like for the love of God and all that's holy, be willing at least to admit to yourself, if no one else, I want and need this. In order for me to feel really good in relationship, I want and need this. The whole piece about how that's gonna get met, secondary. So your mind's gonna jump to like, well, blah, 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 about my partner, or how do I da, 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 da. Don't worry about the how, be willing to stop and admit to yourself. In order for me to feel really good, emotionally and relationally, I need this, 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 and this. So then there's the micronutrient part I was talking about. And again, there's this range so there's the pieces that we just really need a lot of. We need a lot, maybe it's a lot of quality time. Maybe it's a certain kind of attention. Um, so there's also, uh, just to, to flesh this out a little more, there's the pieces we might all agree on. Like, yeah, I want attention or I want respect or I want touch or something, but what kind of touch? How would you know if your partner was offering you the kind of attention that you really want? What are they, is there a way that they need to look at you? Is there, are there words that they would say in response? Like get specific. How is your need truly met? And again, let go of the how. Let go of that they have to give it to you because they don't. But stop. Uh, putting that in the way of admitting to yourself how you are really relationally and emotionally fed. And then taking it into the realm of these micronutrients. So there are these things that maybe we only need a little bit of. And some of them, um, the, the examples I have of these tend to be a little more specific, but it's like maybe you really want to call all the shots, but you only want to do it sometimes. Maybe you really want to be like 
very dominated in bed. But you don't really want that every night. Um, you just want, or every, every I don't know why night, you know, anytime, every time you're, you have sex. Um, so there's these things that you do want, uh, but only a little bit. And these are often the things that we, first of all, they can often fall into the realm of areas that we're a little bit more uncomfortable with, like, you know, being dominated in bed or like getting to call all the shots for a whole, like a day or an evening or like, um, I don't know, prancing around in a unicorn outfit and high heels. Like, like they're just things that were like, oh, that would fulfill some need in me, but it seems a little weird. And is that really me? I mean, I don't really need it. So it's okay if it never happens. So these are the places that things get really weird in relationship because we go for so long without ever getting that met. And like weird little um, vitamins and minerals, we can actually get away with going for a long time without them. But over time, if we really never get them, like, we're like, why, you know, why does my right armpit itch? Or like, why do I get this funny cramp at this particular time at, uh, at night while I'm falling asleep? Or why, like some funny digestive thing, but it's not really that big of a deal. And the same thing happens relationally. We're like, why am I feeling resentful about this? Or like, why do I, why am I craving this thing that I don't even really want that much? But like we're craving, it's, it's, you know, frankly, when it's taken to its extreme, like this is some of the places that people um, go towards having affairs or behaving in ways that they truly are like, I, I don't even really want to do this, but it's the place where we've denied ourselves what we actually want relationally and emotionally for so long. I mean, physically, there's a whole, um, like people will eat dirt because they're craving a certain nutrient that's found there that they're simply not getting. Like, it, we could all say like in some way that's a crazy behavior. So relationally, we do crazy things like that. We will eat dirt because there's some micronutrient, some emotional relational micronutrient that we have been craving for so long that we're like, oh my God, I just have to stuff my face with it. When truly, if we'd been honest with ourselves all along and been like, I don't know, about every like sixth time, I really love to have anal sex or I'd really love, you know, for you to wear a bunny outfit or, um, you know, they don't have to be sexual, although they oftentimes are. And, you know, let's be honest, that's the place where things get the weirdest because it's sex. And we're not only being driven by, you know, uh, the conscious parts of ourselves, but we're being driven by eons of um, biology and, you know, the drive to procreate. But they can also, they can be relational needs. Like, I, sometimes I just want to talk for 10 minutes and all I want to hear is uh, or nothing I don't want you to respond at all I literally want you to listen to me for 10 minutes and you and you don't make any response and these are the kinds of things that so many of us think like I can't ask for that that's weird conversations are supposed to go both ways but that would fulfill some emotional relational need and and then you would stop interrupting your partner all the time or uh, somehow resenting them when you have conversations about your day at the end of the day, even though they were totally kind and tried to support you around the thing you brought, when really what you wanted is for them just to listen and not speak. And then you end up being bitchy and mean to them over dinner and they're like, what is even going on? And you're thinking also, what is going on? I have no reason to feel this way. So any of these weird little places where you're like, what, why am I behaving this way or about your partner? What I would posit is that there is some micronutrient that's not being fed. 
And again, in some way, we're all responsible for ourselves to figure out what these are and then work on getting them met. So I'm just gonna speak about that for a minute, but I wanna say, just to tag it over here too, this is this beautiful area that we actually get to offer the people in our lives a kind of love and care by actually caring about them enough to also imagine like, huh, like he or she always gets really irritated around this thing. I wonder, I wonder if there's some emotional relational nutrient that's not getting met. What if I could uh, proactively try to see what that is and offer it to them? So I'll come back to that. But yes, of course, of course there's also a place that we can say like, gosh, what are my emotional relational micronutrients? Just like I talked about at the beginning, what are your vegetables? What's your you know, protein? Um, how much fiber do you need? It's like, gosh, what are these things that I really, I need in order to function well, emotionally and relationally? And then you start to work out how you actually get that in your diet. Um, some, of, some of it might be play, some of it might be a certain kind of non-reciprocal touch, some of it might be, you know, it's all kinds of things, certain kinds of attention, like really being heard or witnessed. Um, you know, like I said at the beginning, I mean, one of mine that it really is like words of praise. I just need to be told like I'm doing a really good job, I'm really pretty. <laughs> I just realized that somebody put in the comments, you're wonderful. And I was like, oh, they're just saying I'm wonderful, but maybe they're actually, maybe they heard me say I like praise and they're giving it to me like that. That's wonderful. <laughs> and so again, when our friends, when our partners, especially start to share, like I'm needing these things, how can we hear them in a way that's not like um, taking it as criticism, that's not immediately defensive, like, well, I give you blah, 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 like, well, I do that all the time. It's like, how do we feel like, gosh, there's something you're wanting. And together, we haven't yet fulfilled it. How can we fulfill that need? And the same with the micronutrients is like, are there places where I, I'm like, I'm irritated, but I'm not sure why or this thing kind of bugs me and like maybe it's pointing to some place that I'm wanting something that I haven't been willing to ask for. And maybe it's because it, I feel a little ashamed or it's an awkward thing and maybe also it's, it's because it's something I want but not all the time. And that might, so it might point to a place where, well I don't wanna ask for it because um, it seems like an odd thing which is often the things that we need a little bit of, they're just odd. Um, but the other is like, oh, I'm afraid if I ask for that, they'll do it all the time. I'm afraid if I tell them, I, you know, I like to be spanked, that they're just gonna spank me all the time. I don't wanna be spanked all the time. I just want it occasionally. And so is, is, is again, when we take responsibility, is that place first and foremost of doing some self introspection. And you know, so this is an experiment. This is all exploration. So play with it. Like, hey, I think this will meet this need. And then you're like, oh, totally didn't. Have a little humor about that a little bit of levity. Or hey, can we try this? There's 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 this need I have. And I think this might hit some part of it be willing to experiment to play to explore. Be willing to discover things about yourself that maybe you didn't know. Be willing to be surprised by yourself and be willing to be surprised by your partner or your lover or the people who are closest to you. This can also happen in family dynamics or in very long-term, like deep friendships. Let me just check or ask for it and they do it once the next day but they forget to do it again. Yes, right, you might ask for something and they might do it when they're like, okay, and they do it when you ask, but then they don't keep doing it. So that speaks to this place, 
it's, you know, again, I would use the nutritional analogy, which is, um, uh, let's see, what's a good example of this? I mean, the only ones that are coming are more deprivation based, which is different, but you know, okay, like I function better when I don't eat like a pint of uh, chocolate peanut butter cup ice cream every night before bed. Um, but it is really hard for me to remember that after the kids go to sleep and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I, I think I would really be happier if I ate a pint of chocolate peanut butter cup ice cream right now. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure I would feel happier. Um, or where we learn things about ourselves about the kind of nutrition we need and we're like, great, got it. Like now I'm totally on it. But we have a lifetime of habits. We have a lifetime of habits around, you know, relationally also. And if we've been married for a very long time, those habits together are very deep. Or in relationship, um, they're deep personally in terms of we forget to ask for what we want. Um, and, and the other part to your, to your question, Sequoia, is like one time is almost never going to be enough. And, and, it's, it's helpful to remember that it's true for ourselves also. Like if I just tell myself something one time, it's not usually handled. Like, <laughs> and, and so the same is true for our partners. This is also, it's a challenge for them to hear something new from us after a long time of maybe sameness or thinking like, oh, I know that person. There's a real comfort even if it's a little like um, like irritating, there's a comfort in, in going like, cool, I know who you are, I know what you want, like that's handled. I don't have to handle that part of my life anymore. Let me just check. Any good strategies for relearning new commitments? Um, it's a great question. Let me pause on that and come back to it and just just check if I've wrapped this emotional and relational nutrients piece up in a little bit, because that's my, um, it's my weak point on these videos is like, did I, did I wrap that together? So, again, just to be clear, like, first, this is important personal work for us to do, to begin to really do the deep work of like, what do I want relationally and emotionally? What are my big, um, what are the big pieces that's like, you're going to know pretty soon if, if, like, if you just don't eat any vegetables, you know, and you just stop being able to poo, like, that's going to show up fast. And that happens relationally, too. If you're really mismatched or if you really had a misunderstanding and you're just totally not getting something, um, but still being willing to just go like, oh, these are, these are the big ones. I need this a lot. Or if this isn't present on a regular basis, things go south really fast. And then these are the micronutrients. These are the ones that I, I can and probably have gone for long periods without. And even going forward, I might consciously choose to go long periods without but even just knowing that it is gonna happen at some point eases that craving that again on the nutritional level will like cause some people to not even be able to stop themselves from eating dirt because there's some nutrient that their body is craving so much. Similar with the emotional relational, like we'll just act in certain ways. Like if we're wanting attention, for instance, from our partner, I mean, this is one I hear a lot. I, I hear it, um, Often I hear it in the male-female dynamic of a female partner poking and poking and poking until the male partner gets like mad. Um, but it certainly happens the other direction or it happens between women or two men. But, um, and, then, and then even though the partner who was poking might be like, I didn't want you to be mad at me, there's also some relief because it's like, oh, I got your full attention and I've been craving your full attention. So we do weird shit to get these micronutrients met. So take some time and figure out, start, start to figure out or start to explore, you know, because there's no blood test for this yet. <laughs> yet. Um, start to explore what those might be. 
and then be willing to bring them forward like hey you know can we try this hey that that's you know frankly this is like a whole other video is how do you actually ask for those things so I want to come back to good strategies for learning new commitments and then Richard hi Richard um, what do I want in this moment compared to what do I often want helped me to be present to her needs I don't totally follow the place where it's about her needs um, maybe you can clarify that Richard so new commitments or new habits and I'm just gonna just touch on this briefly but you know we say personally there's something like you have to do it for a certain number of days I just saw that my you know dear old friend and teacher Sadhanam is on here and of course in the Kundalini tradition they say uh, you know 40 days 90 days 120 days certain systems will talk about a certain number of hours you need to put into something but it's repetition and it's the willingness to uh, fuck up frankly to make a commitment and break it get back on the wagon break it get back on the wagon um, relationally you know I mean part of where that happens personally is is to let go of the shame you know the self flagellation like oh you know, maybe I fell off the bike, but actually I know how to get back on it. So relationally, again, I can't go into a ton of this right now, but it's it's that commitment to not making each other wrong if we fuck up. And that the deeper commitment is like, I'm going to keep coming back and I'm going to keep trying. So, but there is value in making those commitments together to your um, point, Sequoia, is like, can we try this every night for a week? Um, a, a sort of one that speaks a little bit to this, especially the micronutrients in the sexual realm that I've been talking about. An example is that I had a partner, this is a number, a number of years ago, um, but we both had a desire to experience some things sexually that we hadn't or that we hadn't with each other and um, but it wasn't like we wanted to just do new things you know every day that's a little that's like a little jarring to the nervous system for us anyway for some of you that might be great um, but we so one date night together we we spent one time where we each wrote down on pieces of paper something we wanted to experience or explore we put them all into a box and then we designated one night a week as our exploration night and it switched back and forth kind of who was um, like holding or responsible for that night and that person would draw the paper and then make sure that whatever was on there got created in some way and so that's a way to create a larger structure that brings in new pieces. So, you know, the piece I spoke to before is, for instance, if you both are wanting praise and you're not, there's not enough time for it, you've gotten out of the habit, you take each other for granted, is that you could set a structure, hey, um, every night for a week, let's set aside 10 minutes and we each get praised for five minutes and that's all that happens all that happens when it's your turn is I just tell you what I love about you um, what's amazing what you did really well today what's fucking sexy and hot about you <laughs> I see Donna exploding on the um, <laughs> I love all the love and then it switches and you say thank you and then it switches and the other person just praise 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 so that's like something you might do together that's a new habit you want to create in your relationship the piece I was speaking to is if you're wanting to bring in certain new things, you might create a structure around that, like my past partner and I did, around bringing new experiences into our sexual dynamic. I want to go check because I think there were a couple new comments. What does she want, not I? Okay. What does she want in this moment compared to what does she often want? Right, well, again, this is a kind of one of the challenges of Facebook Live as I'm reading. I'm talking, but 
you only get to write. So it's a little bit one-sided. But there is that piece that I spoke to at the beginning, which is like, there's one place for us to take 100% responsibility for ourselves. And I think as humans, that's important. And, you know, frankly, like, why would we enter into these relationships with each other if it wasn't also to give to each other? So you can take this time to think about your own needs, to get clear on them, to ask for them. And then there's this beautiful lens of generosity and gift where you can turn that attention towards your partner or towards a lover, um, you know, towards your dearest and oldest best friend, you know, wherever this is and go like, gosh, well, what do they really need? And how can I give that to them? So I see you speaking to that a little bit, Richard. Um, do you think it's a good idea for to both name a new micronutrient to tend to for each other, or is it better to only one thing at a time? Well, I would say it depends. I mean, it's always it's always going to be, and it depends. And depending on the resourcefulness of each person in the relationship, you know, sometimes one person really needs to get fed, um, and one person has more resources. And to your to the first part of that question, if you're only um, doing kind of bringing in the micronutrient that one needs, there's a chance that the other person is getting kind of starved. So, you know, balance in relationships is really tricky because it's, it's never balanced. Like, you got to follow the flow, like balance and, and fairness, like, it's kind of dry in relationship. And can you both have attention on, gosh, what, what's going to create aliveness? What's actually going to bring, if we bring the people alive, the relationship will be alive. Or even taking it out of the realm of like the personal, what do I need to come alive? It's like, what will have this relationship, this particular dynamic actually be, um, get all the nutrition it needs, be really fulfilled in that area and thrive? Um, yeah. I'll close this with one more example. I worked with a couple recently and what I teased out in their dynamic, I mean, they're coming with a very specific thing. They have like an issue and they want it met. And instead of like meeting the issue, they were like, we want help with this particular argument we have. Um, but I could see that he is starved for praise. He's working really hard and it's not any, I don't mean this as any criticism of her. I'm sure she probably actually is praising him, but it's not being held. He's not being able to receive it. So creating actually a structure in which he can receive it so he can let those nutrients in, right? Isn't it like you can't, the calcium can't be absorbed if there's not enough vitamin C, like all these things are, they're so weird, right? So it's like whatever the structure is, like the pra he hasn't been able to absorb the praise, but he is starved for it. And um, she has all these desires that she's judging herself for, that she thinks she shouldn't have. And so I started by giving them pra a practice where he gets praised, and then another practice where she gets to name everything she wants, and he... Um, he just reflects it as like beautiful and good and attractive and sexy. Like she might say, you know, like I want this and he'd be like, Oh God, you're like, you're so sexy when you want that. And where she gets to get filled up in that, what she, the, all like the things that she judges as that she shouldn't want them, or maybe they're petty or they mean that she's small, that she wants them. It gives her a framework to have those wants and then have it reflected back that she's still wonderful and beautiful and, and, and that he wants her close. He's not gonna push her away when she has those wants. So like again, this is another example where the needs don't have to be the same. And even frankly, where like the way that that's showing up, uh, you might not meet it head on that they have this particular issue that they want solved. So it didn't actually, I didn't address that issue head on. I looked at these other areas that are having them not be able to come to that conversation um, full. 
And when they can come to that conversation full and actually feeling the foundation of that they're loved and supported by each other, that conversation is going to happen a lot more easily. So that's one of the deep values um, and, and importance of these pieces of like our, our, our emotional and relational nourishment and the nutrients that we need. So thank you so much for being with me. For those of you who are live or for taking the time to watch the replay, if you're watching the replay, um, again, continue to bring any questions or clarifications in the comments and I'll go back and either, you know, make a new video. If, if Sometimes I, I hear questions and comments, I get so excited. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to talk about that. Um, or at least try to write something in response. And um, you can find out more about me at my website, kendrakunov.com. Um, and I'm always happy to hear from you personally, whether it's through Facebook or uh, send me a message through my website and, and offer you any resources that I can. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope that this supported you in some way in your relationships. Ciao.